This is an old 46 inch Sony LCD set uh, from a buddy of mine. Complaint is it intermittently the picture blacks out for about two seconds and other times it'll just shut off and come back and all the settings have gone down to minimum. So we're going to take a look and see if we can spot the problem. This Sony came in from a friend that asked me to take a look at it. Had another one of his sets, his mother's other set, in fact the one she's using now, 40 inch Samsung. I had to replace a couple parts on the sustain board and now she's using that one again. This is the, the, the Bravia and apparently they say this one supposedly shuts down every couple of minutes. It'll shut off. I'm just going to switch it over to um, off air and tune some stuff and see what it does. Okay, there's my in-house test channel. That picture is awful dark. Gee, that's really dark. Like It shouldn't be dark like that. That's ridiculously dark. Go into the options here and see picture adjustments. Oops. Picture mode. Well, let's just do a reset first of all. Reset everything. Oh, that's better. Okay, now it's a little better. Someone had everything turned down to absolute minimum. Okay. Four by three stuff. Let's just hit the wide mode on here. There we go. Now we'll see 4x3. I'm just going to have to let this play and see whether it uh, it acts up. Complaint on it is that it goes black for about two seconds and comes back. So I guess I'm just going to have to let this run and see whether it actually does that. And if it does, then uh, hopefully we can document it. And then I'll pull the back off it and see whether uh, what's causing it, whether we're losing backlights or, or what. I can use this content. This is actually a Sony demo from a beta demo tape going back to the 1980s called Bird's Eye. The video is on my channel if you want to see this channel or uh, see this content. I use this for uh, for testing along with stuff that I shot. But this is from an old beta tape. Anyway, I'm going to let this thing play off camera and hopefully it's going to cut out and we'll be able to see what's causing the problem. It may be uh, it might be an HDMI compatibility problem that uh, that they've got, and that's a very big possibility because uh, they're using it with an HDMI source. Some of the some of the HDMI standards have been updated by the cable suppliers and cable boxes and so forth, and we get some incompatibility with a lot of the older TVs where they'll do weird things. And of course, the way to solve that problem is just to use a component input instead of an uh, HDMI. But I'm going to let this run just off air, like the off air tuner. And let this thing test for a while and see whether it acts up. What I think I will do is I'm just going to do a factory reset on this to start with. So I'm going to go down to setup and go down to product support. This will wipe all the channels and everything, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that there's nothing, nothing in the memory causing a problem. Okay, all the channels are scanned back in. I'm just going to let this thing run and hopefully it's going to do something. It might have been something messed up in the software. You can always hope. And uh, I guess we'll find out pretty quick. Now the unit's still running. It hasn't acted up. It's been going now for about an hour. I was just talking to the guy that owns it, and I mentioned that when I first turned it on, all the settings were at minimum. And he said that occasionally it's done that for him too. He says they'll be watching it, and it'll go black, and everything's gone to minimum. And he's had to reset things. I'm starting to think maybe, just maybe, we're getting into an overheated processor. Uh, maybe the thermal compound is dried up on it and it's getting to the point where it's just doing a reset blowing out all the settings and then everything has to be redone like all the all the settings go to minimum like it was when it was here so maybe we'll pull the back off this set and just look at the board and see whether the whether the thermal paste is dried up it certainly hasn't acted up here yet and it's been say running for about an hour i'm just using the analog input for the tuner Right now I haven't hooked it up to HDMI yet, so we'll, we'll hook it up to HDMI and uh, let it run on that for a bit too and, and see whether it's a compatibility problem on HDMI. So I'm going to let it run now on the HDMI input for a while and uh, we'll see what acts up. So again, talking to the owner of the set, he said that it, occasionally it'll like, like a little zit and it'll go out and it'll come back with all the settings reset intermittently. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe we've got a connection problem. A loose ground screw could certainly cause that. And of course, transporting it out here, it's reconnected everything. 
So I think what I need to do on this is I'm going to pull back off this one, and we'll take a look and see whether there's any evidence that um, that there's been any arcing, and check for loose ground screws, because that can certainly cause intermittent problems as it heats up, right? And you get a bad ground, it causes voltages to go wonky, and then the thing resets. So um, let me get the back off this one, and we'll we'll take a look and see whether it's something that's causing something like a connection problem. It's intermittent, right? You, you, you have to hate intermittent problems because they never fault when they're in the shop. Goddamn intermittent thing. You know, I used to hate it because you'd get something in, and someone would say it's doing this every five minutes, and you run the thing all day, and it doesn't do it. And you know, as soon as they get it back home, it's going to do it again. But this one here has now been running now for about two hours now. It's elapsed since I, uh, I last recorded. I did it on analog there for a while. I've had it running on HDMI input off my converter box, my cable box. And I'm only showing this because it's commercials, right? But um, it hasn't faulted yet. So I, I gotta get in there and we'll get in and take a look at the power supply and look for any any bulge caps and or um, look for connections. L loose grounds is what I'm thinking. So let's get the back off this one. Okay, so here's the back off the set. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just check to see if any of the ground screws are loose. Because loose ground straps can certainly cause issues. Especially ones that are grounding to the chassis. We'll notice that these ones have a tab on them. So these are critical grounding screws. Generally what happens is on the circuit board they are providing a path which is not continuous. They're using the chassis. So any of these that are loose, even slightly, can certainly cause intermittent problems. So let's just see, first of all, are they loose? Okay, that one does not appear to be loose. How about this one here? Nope, that one's not loose. This one up here. Nope, and that one does not have a tab on it, and this one does here. So these ones do not appear to be loose, so let's just check the connections, the, the screws over on the main board. I'm just trying to ever so slightly undo them to see if any of them back off relatively easily. So none of these appear to be really loose, like falling out loose. They're not excessively tight, but they're not really loose. So I guess the first thing we can check on this I can certainly check some of the capacitors here for ESR. Uh, we can check the main board. I'm going to take the... Oh, there's another one here. Is this one loose? Nope, not particularly. Um, what I can do is we can check that heat sink to see how the, the thermal paste is on. I don't know if the heat sink comes off on these easily or not. Some of them are held in place with clips. Others are screwed down and so forth. But I guess first things first, we'll check the, we'll check the heat sink. So I'll undo the connectors here, undo the LDVS board. Oh yeah, the timing control board too, I didn't check that for tightness, but... We'll start with the main board. I'll remove the main board and we'll just take a look at it. Oh, that screw wasn't particularly tight. Again, it could still be a loose ground. So I'm going to take them out and I'm going to look for any indication that there's been any arcing either on the below the board or on the screw itself. And then we'll check the thermal compound on the chip itself. See if it's dried up. See these are not really tight, they just they weren't falling out loose with it. There's no effort required to remove them. They weren't seated in place with really much in terms of tension on the screw itself. Not much torque. So it still could be a grounding problem that's causing this intermittent problem on this set.
So this is the screws that uh, were holding the board in place. If we look around them, you can see what looks like evidence that they may there may have been arcing occurring. If you look around here, you can see it looks like pitting on some of the screws. So we may have had a grounding problem. Several of the screws have this, and we, we'll, we'll get a close look at the board itself, the mating surface for those screws. So here's the board side of things. See, it's kind of dull. And as you can see, this ground only covers over to here, right? These are multiple grounds. They, are, they don't go to the entire plane. There are multiple grounds on the board. There's another one here. You see some of these just don't look great. Once again, see I'm looking for any signs of pitting or anything around any of the connections because uh, that's a sure indicator that there's some voltage difference and it doesn't have to arc you know these boards don't draw a lot of current unlike the plasma sets which were you know high current high voltage boards when they when the connections went bad they tended to actually arc and burn you won't see that on a board like this because this is relatively low voltage. But what happens is if a connection goes bad and it's a connection that's providing a ground to a specific portion of the board where they're using the metal chassis to ground that section of the board, which is, they do that a lot. You know, there'll be some that are connected together. There'll be other ones that are not connected in any way and they, they use the metal of the chassis to provide the ground. So if you lose a connection, you could end up with a slight potential rise on that portion of the board which can cause all kinds of weird things to happen. The fact that this set was intermittently going black and coming back and then other times it was just resetting itself or not resetting itself but all the, all the, the control settings were going to minimum. You gotta think something is causing that and you know I don't think we're going to have a capacitor issue on here causing that. I don't see any indication that the capacitors are, are leaking or any way. There's no bulging or anything on any of these caps to indicate that they are, are failing in any way. I'm just looking at this on camera to see if I can see any anything that looks like any bulging on any of these capacitors like this one here. There's nothing on that. That's perfectly flat. It looks like they could have been a little tighter to hold that board and look on the other side of the board as well. Let's take a look at the back side because this, all, this side's also pressed down onto the board itself, onto the chassis. Historically, these boards have not had a high failure rate. And this set's 14 years old. It looks like a ground point right there, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to put this board back in, tighten it down, and then we'll do the same. We'll take a look at the power supply board. The power supply board, I'm more interested in these connectors here, these tabs. This is where it grounds. 
So I'm looking to see if I see any evidence that there's been any arcing that has occurred on any of these ones. Which would normally show up as like black pitting. Looks like a good bond there. Now those look like pretty good bonds. That's the high voltage connector for the backlight and the lock pit, the lock lever was not in the lock position. It was in the unlock position when I went to unplug. Normally the normally the little clip is pushed this way, right? It says lock and you gotta push it that way to release it. It was not in the locked position. And you give the board an inspection for some of the high power transformers and stuff to see if there's any connections that look flaky on here. They all look pretty good so far. But I've just begun to look at the board. Good thing the camera was just off. One of the speakers fell off the chassis and landed on the bench and scared the crap out of me. It just about jumped out of my skin. I hear this pop behind me and I look and the speaker's falling off the, the chassis and dropped down onto the bench. These are the rectifier diodes here for this for the television itself. So I'm paying particular attention to these because if the voltage were to drop momentarily from a connection, it could certainly cause the set to uh, do a shutdown, a momentary shutdown or a reset. We're going to check these capacitors too in the uh, secondary stage here for high ESR because capacitors, of course, cause all kinds of issues and. You know, this is about the right age for caps to be going bad on a switching power supply set being it's uh, about 14 years old. So it's about that time frame where capacitors would be expected to start failing. I'll probably go over these connections anyway just because like that one there. If you look at this one right there how it looks on camera but from my angle it looks like it's a it looks like there's a slight crack around the terminal I don't know if you can see it on camera or not but it certainly will show up if I get the light right both of these will look like they have slight cracks around them see right here and right here on my bigger eyeballs and take a closer look at that but it just looks like it looks like a crack I'll resolder that and the transformer for that matter I've got it apart but I'm going to check the caps out in the secondary here see if there's a problem with the ESR so I pulled one cap out to check it they check okay in circuit I pulled out one just to take a look at it it's 0.03 it's a thousand microfarads at uh, 16 volts so 0.09 is what would be considered the, the worst rating for a new one and this is rated 0 0.03 if we measure the capacity of it I'll put the meter on here and just take a look at what it says and no I'm not showing you guys the meter but I'll call it out what it says just because the meters out of reach out of camera reach it's 15 1535 oh it's a 1500 oh geez well, then it is measuring correct. It's measuring 1500. I, I misread it. I thought it said 1000, but it's, it's a 1500. 
and it is measuring 15, 1500. Yeah. 1519. So we're, we're fine with this one. I misread that it is a 1500, as is the other one, so I'm sure it's okay as well if I measure that one in circuit. It'll probably measure a little different, but yes, yeah, 1650. So it's, it's measuring other stuff in the circuit. Though. What are these other ones down here? That's another. Well, this one's a thousand. That one's a 1,000, and this one here is a 47. 47. Is that all that is? No, 470. 470. I'll pull these other ones just to just to measure them, but, I, but they're, they're probably okay. Yeah, that one measured right on the money, 1,000. So let's put this one back in. Same with this other one. I'll pop this one out here as well. We'll check that. That's another 1,500, but I expect that it's going to be fine. Point zero two on the ESR meter and the capacitor meter. This is another fifteen hundred. It should be right around fifteen hundred, and it is uh, fifteen fifteen. So these ones are fine. I'll check the four seventy as well. And I'll just resolder these these connections here that look a little bit questionable. Like even without looking at them closely, it looks like there's little cracks around here. This last one is a four hundred and seventy microfarad cap. And it's 470. There you go. Close enough. So I think they're all four caps are testing good. I'm going to redo the diodes. There's several of them look like the connections are fractured, right? Like right here, for example. So I'm going to redo the diodes. And then I'm going to put it back together and uh, let the set run and see if it if it acts up at all. If it, if it runs all day and doesn't act up, then I'm going to send it out and let the owner of it let me know if it's if it's still acting up. If it is, then I guess he'll have to buy a new TV. Definitely these ones here look a little flaky. I mean it's lead free solder so I mean it's gonna look flaky anyway, but it's looked like they were cracked. And I'll do this I'll do the transformer as well. I'll do the pins on the transformer.
I'm busy working away here and that mother landed on me. A um, little bit of high voltage. A little bit of high voltage dealt with this bugger. He didn't go snap, crackle, and pop like uh, mosquito juice do. He just kind of fizzled away. Let's see if we can make him go snap, crackle, and pop. I'm sure he's dead. He's had thousands of volts going through his little lifeless body for a while. Turn on the power. Ah, there he's cooking. He's cooking. Stinking too. That's right. Burn, baby, burn. You bugger gonna come in here and try to sting me, you piece of crap. <laughs> Good old electric fly swatter claims another victim. Works great, great on these stinging bastards. Right, I'm gonna put the board back in. I've gone over. I said, check the caps; they're all good. I went over the connections on the transformer, the chopper here, the diodes. The diodes look to be the worst. Like these ones looked like there was definitely some cracks in them. The other ones all look okay. I've, I've kind of looked at them all. I don't see any that are sticking out, jumping out, saying that they are are bad. These ones are the diodes in the high voltage supply for the backlights. And I don't think there'll be a timing controller problem on this set. A TCON problem would cause a pitcher related issue, not necessarily for the set to reset itself. The fact that the set was resetting itself is a, generally an indicator that it's either a power supply problem or a problem on the main board. And all those grounds looked a bit, some of them looked a bit flaky. So I tightened it up. I'd say they weren't falling out loose, but they weren't really excessively tight. So I give those uh, ground screws a little more of a torque and redo the regular or redo the rectifiers here. Check the caps. The caps all are testing good. So, um, but all I can do now is put it back together and we'll let it test run and see if it acts up. Okay, the board's reattached. I'll put the plug back together. See, this wasn't locked in place. That was sitting like that. Alright, I'm just going to plug it in now, hook it up uh, to my cable box, I guess, and we'll fire it up and let it run and see what happens. I'm going to let it run for a while before I put the back on it. I'll leave it run facing the other way, just for a while so I can monitor it and see what's going on, see if it's going to act up. We can see the backlights lighting up through here, right? So, monitor this for a while, let it run for a few hours, and then I'm going to put the back on it and we'll run it for a few more, and if it continues to run, then I'll be happy to say I think it's time to send it out. See what uh, see what happens. So the uh, unit's now been running now for a few hours. I've been watching it. It has not cut out. So fingers crossed. I've just put the bag back on. I'm going to run it for the rest of the day. But uh, so far, everything's looking good. So at this point, I'm going to say that this unit is probably fixed. And I can send it back home. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.